Today we're talking about Shirai, Shizo's caretaker. So this is a 2-2 spirit. It costs 4 and a black. Whenever a creature with power 1 or less is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step if Shirai Shizo's Caretaker is still on the battlefield. So let's talk about this deck. The commander is very powerful, and let me show you how. So starting off with card draw, my favorite thing to talk about, we have Midnight Reaper. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, this is going to deal one damage to us, and we get to draw a card. We also have Morbid Opportunist, but what's great about this is that while it only happens once each turn, that means there's four cards in one turn cycle. Whenever Midnight Reaper just focuses on non-token, Morbid Opportunist cares about a creature dying, which is very helpful. We also have Dusk Legion Zealot. Whenever this enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card and lose one life. Novice Oculus. When this dies, we draw a card and lose one life. We have Clattering Augur. This can't block, but when it enters the battlefield, we draw a card and lose one life. We can also pay four mana to return this to our hand, but we're probably never going to use that ever. We also have Mindless Automaton. We do pay four mana, and it enters the battlefield with two counters, which seems really bad, because it is normally. But we can remove two plus one plus one counters from Mindless Automaton to draw a card, which would kill it, right? Well, whenever a power one or less is put into our graveyard, we can return it back to the battlefield at the next end step with our commander. So we can constantly draw a card on our turn, opponent number two, three, and four. So four cards in one turn cycle, and this has a sack outlet pretty much on it, which is really great. We also have Grim Haru Specs. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, we get to draw a card. We also have Sky Scanner. When this enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card. The last one is Smothering Abomination. At the beginning of our upkeep, we do have to sacrifice a creature, but whenever we sacrifice a creature, we draw a card. It can't just die for no reason. It has to be sacrificed in order for us to get this trigger. So that is what we have for card draw when it comes to our creatures, and I'll just be mentioning creatures in this video. So for getting mana, we have Shambling Ghast. When this dies, I'm probably going to choose Search the Body, which is to create a treasure token. It's also a 1-1. One -one. We have Skullport Merchant, when this enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. It also has a sack outlet on it. We can sacrifice another creature, pay one in a black, or a treasure. We get to draw a card, and it's a 1-4, so again, our commander can target this and Shambling Ghast. The last one for treasure tokens is Gleaming Barrier. When this dies, we get a treasure token, and it has a power of zero. Now, you may be looking at these and saying, wow, these are not great cards, but remember, with our commander, we're able to keep getting these back every single end step. So when this enters the battlefield, we search for a basic land from our library, we're going to reveal it and put it into our hand. And the same is true for Skittering Surveyor and Pilgrim's Eye. The reason why I have three of these in here is because these can quickly remove all the swamps from our library and put them into our hand. Why this matters is because the less likely we're able to draw land and start getting some creatures or instant removal that we actually need, this deck is going to function very well and we're never going to miss a land drop, which is really sweet. As for the tokens, we have Ogre Slumlord. Whenever a non-token creature dies, Eyes, you may create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token, and rats you control have death touch. Now, this does have a power 3, but I'll mention later in the video, we have ways to bring back our creatures that are not power 1 or less. Another great thing about this card is that it says whenever another non-token creature dies. This doesn't specify just ours, so even when an opponent's creature dies, we're getting benefit from this. The next one is Marsh Flitter. When this comes into play, we create two 1-1 one, one black goblin rogues, and we can also sacrifice a goblin, so this has a sack outlet on it, and then this becomes a 3-3 three, three until end of turn. It's also a 1-1 one, one flyer. Lightning Coils. Whenever a non-token creature you control is put into the graveyard from play, so when it dies, we put a charge counter on Lightning Coils. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Lightning Coils has five or more counters, which is very likely, by the way, we remove all of them, and we put that many 3-1 red elemental creature tokens with haste into play, and then we remove them from the game at the end of turn. So we're going to want to attack with those creatures or sacrifice them, somehow getting value from these elementals that we're making from this card. Now, if you're looking to really take advantage of life loss, this is the way to do it. We have Tattered Mummy. It's a 1-2, so our commander can grab it from our graveyard to the battlefield. When it dies, each opponent loses 2 life. Zulaport Cutthroat. When this or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one and you gain one. Weaponcraft Enthusiast. Now, I meant to put this with the tokens, but we'll mention it anyways. It has Fabricate 2, so when this enters the battlefield, we can either put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on this or create 2 servos. We're going to pick the 2 servos because this ends up being a 0 power card, so we get a lot of tokens from one turn cycle. Next is Sir Conrad the Grim. When another creature dies, or a creature is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature leaves your graveyard, this is going to deal one damage to each opponent. Our deck does a lot of shenanigans with the graveyard, so this is a great way for our opponents to lose life. 
Next is Serrated Scorpion. When it dies, it deals two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. Falconrath Noble. When Falconrath Noble or another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one. So now it's any creature dying, but we're only focusing one player this time. Next is Vindictive Vampire. When another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals one to each opponent, and you gain one life. Marionette Master. So we are going to, most likely, put three plus one plus one counters on this when we're able to start messing with artifacts. So this says, whenever an artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. So if we don't already have enough artifacts to make this worth it, we can always use Fabricate 3, which when it enters the battlefield, we get those three 1-1 one, one colorless servo tokens. So we can keep doing that for a while and take advantage of that because it does have one power. Now as for the creature removal, I guess you could call it, creatures that have removal on them, we have Elvish Doomsayer. Now I do not like to have opponents discard cards because I think that is a non-fun way. So I only have Doomsayer to do this. So whenever it dies, each opponent discards a card. And I can repeat this only if necessary. I typically do not want to do this. And the last one is Butcher of Malakir. This helps me end the game very quickly because if we have a huge amount of creatures, this helps us clear the board of our opponents. So it says whenever this or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So if we have already sacrificed those five creatures we're going to sacrifice anyways, each opponent has to sacrifice five creatures. So we can most likely clear their board, go and swing in, or just keep repeating this over and over. It can get very annoying to our opponents. That's why I only have these two cards, and this is going to cost us seven mana to do so. Now let's talk about the sack outlets, because they're very important to us. We have Blood Baron, which we could swing in with. We have to sacrifice another creature, and this gets plus two, plus two, until end of turn. Carrion Feeder does the same thing, except now we have plus one, plus one counters, so it keeps that, and we also get to sacrifice a creature. Viscera Seal, it's a sack a creature, and we get to scry one. Now, Lampad of Death's Vigil, not as great as the other ones, because we have to pay one and sacrifice a creature. If we didn't have that mana cost in the front, this would have been really sweet, but it lets each opponent lose one life and we gain one. Bloodthrown Vampire. We sacrifice a creature and Bloodthrown Vampire gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Bloodflow Connoisseur. We sacrifice a creature and we put a plus one plus one counter on Bloodflow Connoisseur. Dross Hopper. We sacrifice a creature and this gains flying until end of turn, so it's probably going to gain flying like five times normally. The last one in this category is Woe Strider. When it enters the battlefield, we get a zero one goat creature token and we can also sacrifice another creature to scry one. Now how do we get back those creatures that are not power one or less? Well we have Dutiful Attendant. When it dies we return another creature card from a graveyard to our hand and what's great about this it has one power. Or how about Cadaver Imp? It does the same thing but it costs one black black instead of two black and it's a 1-1 one, one flyer. So we have two ways to bring back those bigger creatures. When it comes to protecting our commander we have a few ways. There is Mirror Shield. We pay two and two to equip and our creature gets hexproof. There's Dark Privilege it has a sack outlet on it and we can regenerate the enchanted creature. There's soul channeling. We can pay two life to regenerate the enchanted creature. And last we have Mask of Avacyn. We pay two to cast it, three to equip, which is a lot, but for budget sense, deck is really good at that. Our creature is going to get plus one, plus two, and hexproof. So again, we want to target our commander with these because our commander is not going to be leaving the battlefield, hopefully. Second to last category, we have Tormod the Desecrator, and we also have Desecrated Tomb. So whenever one or more creatures are leaving our battlefield, excuse Excuse me, the graveyard, we create tokens. And with how Shirai is worded, this counts for each creature we're bringing back to the battlefield. So if we have five creatures die, their power one or less, when we bring them back, we get a token for each one of them. So with Desecrated Tomb, we get one one black bats with flying. And with Tormod the Desecrator, we get two two black zombies that are tapped. These are very powerful for the deck. The last card I want to mention is Grave Merchant of Asphodel. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black, and you gain X life. And you gain life equal to the life lost this way. So whenever we have a huge board full of black devotion, this is going to be the card to help us knock out the game or deal a huge amount of life loss. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of Shirai Shizo's Caretaker. This was a $20 build, which is really sweet. So if you're looking for a control black deck, this is going to be the one for you. If you'd like to purchase it, there's a link down below in the description. Thank you to the members who help support this show, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh, peace.